Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'll be reading a Rengoku X listener by me. So let's get into it. Rengoku did not know that things could always be so different. But perhaps it was different in a good way. Your mornings were the same in a way. But still, they took on a new color. Rengoku would make you breakfast in bed, instead of the living room, refusing to make you move around too much. He'd be careful to make you a light breakfast, and a tea that would help you with your nausea. That way, you wouldn't feel like vomiting so easily. And that was just the beginning. He spoiled you to no end. After all, you were now taking care of his child as well. And he had to help you in one way or another. That meant cleaning around the house for him, cooking, and refusing to let you help around at all. He just wanted to do his best, so you wouldn't be so tired with him, so you wouldn't have to keep helping him while caring your child. And as such, when you're going to do something simple like getting a glass of water, he goes, no, Ion. Sit down, I'll get it right there for you. Rengoku, it's really just a glass of water. It's nothing to worry about, and it's not going to kill me. Well, um, I'm always available to help, and I want to help right now. And I don't need that help. He took his hands gently into your own, squeezing them. Look at me, please. And although he seems quite reluctant, he does so, and you find yourself smiling. Listen to me. Yes, I may be carrying a child in my own belly right now, but I'm only two months in, and most importantly, it's not going to kill me to move around sometime. I'll be fine. And so will you, if you will leave me to get that glass of water. And do my legs some good exercise. I don't move all day. I barely do anything. I want to feel like I'm a human, you know. And he finds himself just sighing. He knows he can be quite overprotective. But he couldn't help it. It just came second nature to him. You were in a vulnerable state. And he wanted to do his best. To make sure you got all the care that you deserved. It only came as instinct to him. It was something that was so hard for him to go against. And he would have to actively try not to do. But he would do it. For your sake. To make you happy. And to bring a smile to your face. But little did you know. That soon enough. All of his effort would be in vain. Two days later, you slip down the stairs, and he comes home to find you passed out, bleeding, and he knows already just how bad it could get. He's crying by the time he reaches the hospital, his emotions getting the best of him, as he begs you and your child to be okay. Is he even in there anymore? He wonders. But he dares not think about it too long. He can't think of that. He's been too hopeful. He wanted this more than anything in the world. And so did you. The two of you were so happy. So excited to start this new chapter of your life. And he did not want it to end so poorly. So tragically. And yet. That may just be the end of it and the start of a much darker one. And when a doctor came out of your room to tell him the news, Rengoku was devastated to know that his child and yours, your own child, had died. He knew that it was possible. He knew it was a very big possibility, and the odds of you and your child surviving would not be very big. But he had hoped. He had hope within his heart. 
that everything would be fine in the end. But maybe you should have been more realistic and known that the odds threatened horribly were far too great to ignore. He sat by your side at the bed, waiting for you to wake up. He had no idea how to break the news to you, how to tell you it all ended. But he knew he had to be strong, and that he had to be by your side. You would need him more than anything, and of course he was going to be there for you. He was not going to leave you during a tough time like that. He wouldn't. And that's why, when you woke up, you saw him asleep beside you, holding your hand still. You squeezed his hand in return, but weakly, and when you woke up, you smiled at him. Sorry, Rangaku. I know. I know it must have scared you a lot. But I'm alright now. And... What about our baby? Is he okay too? You ask. And you seem to not be paying it too much attention. And... To be as helpful as he was. That everything had ended alright. But when he breaks down into tears at the mention of it. You just find out what had happened. Without him needing to say a word. He looks away. Taking a shaky breath. I... I'm sorry, Wyon. I got there too late. Maybe. Or maybe I just wasn't there to help you. Don't say that. It's not your fault. You find yourself comforting him through your own tears as well. And then you look at each other. And discover that the two of you have lost something very important. Though you had not seen your own child yet, you had both developed attachments toward him, and you wanted nothing more than the reality of you being able to build a family to come to fruition. But it did not. But was in your grief you discover that your love is still there, and it is far more important than something you will not lose. Something that will not be taken away from you. And there are many chances there. Ahead or right in front of you. In the long journey that the two of you will go across together.